While our next guest writes about the gun violence epidemic, arguing the gun reform strategy the left has championed for decades has got it wrong. Dr. Jonathan Metzl joins us now with his new book titled, What We've Become, Living and Dying in a Country of Arms. Dr. Metzl, thanks for being with us again this morning. So what does the left have wrong when it talks about gun reform? Well, I, 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 I'm a liberal doctor uh, living here in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and the book is really about a 2018 mass shooting that happened here in Nashville. A naked white man went into a Waffle House and killed four young adults of color. Really a horrific mass shooting that traumatized our entire city. And in the aftermath, it just seemed like what, you know, what we learned about the case in the aftermath was that this was a slam dunk case. We needed more public health gun reform. This guy should have been stopped. It was a similar story to the one we just heard. His parents had given him the gun, but there were all these, all these warning signs. And, and instead, what happened here in Nashville is after people like me, Democrats like me spoke out and doctors spoke out and the community spoke out and we protested. Um, the state turned around and elected a governor, Bill Lee, who ran on a platform of, I'm gonna make it a lot easier for people like this shooter and other, other white men to get guns. And so really the story of the book is, why is it, why is it that a, a case like this, that was such a clear case of, we need red flag laws, we need background checks, why didn't it work? These are positions I support. And in the book, I, I talk about really three narratives. One is, it's a story about race and violence and guns in, in the South, the kind of story we know. It's also a story about the power of the NRA and the power of the gun lobby and controlling judges and institutions here in the South. But for me, the, the surprising third narrative narrative was I really learned a lot. I spent five years interviewing people on all sides of this. I interviewed gun owners uh, all across uh, Tennessee and Kentucky and other places. And they told me things that I found really interesting, which were that, um, you know, we hate these mass shootings also, but after mass shootings, people like you run in and say, we need more government regulation. We need more background checks that are government databases, more red flag laws that are empowering the, uh, the police to surveil us. Uh, and so what they told me was the message that you guys are, are, are sending really pushes us more toward wanting to hold hold tighter to our guns. And so part of the part of the book is a reckoning about what I thought about that narrative and how that might make me change my own practices as, as somebody who's admittedly a, a liberal who supports gun control. Dr. Metzl, you have such an interesting perspective coming from Tennessee, where there are guns everywhere, and actually talking to gun owners there. And can you talk about what you write and what you learned in the process of this book about how gun owners view any, uh, any new regulation? Well, one of the most powerful interviews that I, that I talk about in the book, beside the ones with the people involved in the shooting. Um, a guy told me, you know, liberals always think if they just shout louder that we're going to hear their message or it's a, a question of messaging for us. Um, and what he said is, um, you know, the liberal framework says that it's common sense gun reform. That implies that I don't have common sense because I feel like my safety comes from my weapon and not from the government. And again, that's not a position that I agree with, but I really came to understand that perspective, which is that for this guy, um, coming back, you know, us, people like me coming in and saying we need more regulation was no match for the counter message that he was hearing from people like Trump, people like Republicans in Tennessee, which who were, who were telling him basically, you can keep your power, you can keep your guns if you just vote for me and not for these Democrats. And so in part, I really came to understand how regulation was no match for the power message. But I also came to understand that people a lot of people I spoke with kind of wanted change. They just wanted different kinds of change than the than the, than things people like me initially were offering. Dr. Metzler, uh, uh, Sharpton here. In in your book, do you deal with the fact? I know you uh, say you dealt with some of the legislation, some of the race factors, and all. But what about the cultural factors? Because I think a lot of people like you and I that may want to see uh, gun reform underestimate how people see uh, gun ownership is is that's who they are. This is a real statement of you're after my culture. You're after trying to change who I am, who my daddy was, my granddaddy was. How do you deal with the cultural identity of gun ownership? Well, part of that is that um, we, we make the 
understandable, but I think mistake sometimes um, of rushing in. I mean, it's understandable why we respond to mass shootings, and particularly ones as horrific and sensational as the one I write about. Um, but a lot of gun owners told me, you guys only pay attention to us after mass shootings, and you rush in and you conflate all of us. You, you say, here's a mass shooting, and therefore all gun owners, they, they felt um, you know, like they were all guilty or, or, or something like that. So in a way, part of the issue was that they felt like their culture was under attack. Now, I am not a neutral observer here. As you mentioned, I'm a, I'm a scholar of race also. And so I write very critically about the culture that suggests that, you know, what it means to be a white male citizen in the South is somebody who carries a gun. That's a historical uh, story that we know for hundreds of years. White men were the men who, uh, the, you know, who were esteemed enough to carry weapons and everybody else wasn't. And so part of the story is about how um, that culture, of, I think it needs to be changed. But I would right. also argue that we need to understand it a, a, a lot more deeply. All right. The new book is titled What We've Become, Living and Dying in a Country of Arms. Jonathan Metzl, thank you so much. Thanks um, so much.